Hi there! Today we're making this barrel weave chainmail bracelet. So let's get mailing. Our first task is to work out the size of jump rings that we need, and this depends on the aspect ratio. Most chainmail designs will give you a number for the ideal aspect ratio of the jump rings used in that design. So we need to use a little bit of maths, but it's not too complicated. The aspect ratio is simply the internal diameter of the jump ring divided by the wire diameter used to make that jump ring. So the aspect ratio multiplied by the wire diameter gives us the internal diameter. For the barrel weave, the aspect ratio is 3.5. I'm gonna use 1.25 millimeter diameter wire to make the jump rings. So 3.5 times 1.25 equals 4.375, which we can round up to 4.5 for the mandrel used to make the jump rings. You can, of course, buy the jump rings rather than make them yourself, but just make sure that the diameter given is the internal diameter of that jump ring, not the external diameter. If you're making your own jump rings, you can cut them by hand, but I've found, particularly for the number of jump rings needed for chain mail, the Durston Jump Ringer makes the process really quick and easy. You just need to select the mandrel you want, wind the wire into a coil, then pop that coil into the holder. Don't forget to add a bit of lubricant. and then cut them with the blade attached to your pendant motor. If you want more details about the Durston Jump Ringer, check out my unboxing video. I'll leave a link in the card above and in the description below. Before starting the chainmail design, I like to prepare all of the jump rings. And for the barrel weave, for each unit, we need three open jump rings, and two closed jump rings. And we also need one additional closed jump ring to start the design. So we can just go ahead, opening three jump rings and closing two until we've worked our way through the pile of jump rings that we've got. And we're now ready to start the weave itself. Okay, so we're now ready to start the weave. So we're going to start with that closed jump ring. And I find it useful to attach this to one of these wire ties. It just helps hold on to the weave when you're starting. Then we're going to take one of our open jump rings, add two closed jump rings, and then attach it to that closed ring that we're starting with. We'll close that up. So you can see what we've now got is a single jump ring, a single jump ring, and then two jump rings. We're then gonna take our next open jump ring, put that through the two rings on the end of that line, and then carefully twist it up to the top and take it through that first jump ring. We can then close that jump ring up And you can see now those two jump rings that we put on together are sort of sitting vertically in the line. Now to finish this unit off, just wanna make the space to show you that we want to put another ring through where those two that are lying flat cross. Now this can be a little bit fiddly, but it does get easier as you go along and get the knack of it. So that new jump ring, as you can see, it's just going through the space where those two jump rings cross. I expect that might have been a bit out of focus. So I'll put it down and go through again. We've got that first jump ring that we started with. 
Then this lower ring is the second one we put on. The two that are currently vertical are the third two rings that we put on. Then that top ring is the one we twisted to get back up to the front. And at the end we have the last ring that we put on, going through where those two flat rings cross. So I just want to show these last two rings again. This is the second to last ring, the one that we need to twist to take through the first ring. And then for the last ring that we're putting on, we're taking it through those two rings that are kind of lying flat. So there's that back ring and we can take it through one at a time and then take it through the front ring and close it up. And that locks the unit in place. And that last ring that we put on then becomes the first ring for the next unit. So we just need to continue building the chain in this way. And honestly, with chain mail, it actually sounds more difficult in describing it than it tends to be to do. So it's worth just getting some jump rings and giving it a try. I have also seen a couple of different ways of putting together the barrel weave. I like this way because I think it's the quickest once you've got the knack. But if you find you really can't get on with it, have a look for some more barrel weave chainmail videos and see if a different method works for you better. And we just get that last jump ring on and that finishes the weave part of the chain, which is just under seven and a half inches long just over 18 centimetres. And just as a bit of a guide to work out how many jump rings you need, we can measure one of those units to be about three eighths of an inch or about nine millimetres. And we need five jump rings for each of those units, plus a few extra for the beginning and end. We can now take off that wire tie And add on a clasp to one end. This is just a simple hook clasp that I've made for myself. And we can use that directly in that first ring. But I think it might sit slightly better if we add another jump ring. And this is exactly the same as the ones we've used for the weave. So I just pop that onto the other end and then we can hook the clasp into that. And our bracelet's finished. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, why not head to this playlist for more chainmail tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.